Welcome to the One to Nine podcast for interesting insights and knowledge from animals and other beings within multidimensional realms. So, yesterday I saw you briefly when we were passing each other and walking by each other, but I didn't have a whole lot of time. And I was explaining to you that my right oh, yeah. ear is completely clogged. And, and you were getting something from the drugstore. Yes, which didn't do anything, neither did the peroxide. Okay. So there's some almost like dead ball of something in there. Well, it feels like a a mucus. <clears throat> I mean, it came from the sinus irritations that I've had. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I was just wondering if before we start the session, you could see if there's anything little guys could do. I tried asking them myself, and I kept getting circular conversations <laughs> with them <laughs> with who I should ask and who should do what and was I really intending to get healed or to want to wait till the podcast I mean all that stuff was like they were, they, were, they were saying these things to you my mind was saying them so I don't know where all the thoughts were coming from but I was like <clears throat> okay so I thought if you, we talked to him right now, then maybe by the end of the podcast, that little fuzz ball in my ear, that it's a little worrisome because I don't want my ear to get infected and it's been sitting in there for a day now, uh-huh. 24 hours, just, right. and I don't know if it's a, um, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't appear to be wax mm-hmm. holding something in. For those of you who are wondering what this pause is all about, Diana's having a conversation. She's having a conversation, and I'm just, um, I'm just letting you know. Well, it's not really a conversation. Okay, I'm, I was. Uh, well, maybe it is a conversation. A conversation usually is between two or more people, right? But I'm, I'm saying there's this the one there's one little guy and he seems to be littler than the others because so he can get into your ear and he's he's looking at stuff right and it's like white and it's fluffy it's fluffy kind of stuff and uh i don't think it's going to be that hard to to get out um hmm okay now there's more of them and they're just going to go and blow it out. That's what they're doing. You feel anything? No. <laughs> um, Maybe that's not going to work. I don't know. Well, I don't mind if they blow it out and it's white fluffy stuff. But well, that would be easy. Yeah, it would be. I don't. I don't really feel anything yet, but. Uh huh. Is it going to be one blow, or are they going to be blowing on it for a while? Well, I don't know. They're still doing it. Okay. I mean, they may decide to do something else. Um, okay, well, they're they're working on it. Awesome. Well, thank you. We'll check back later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, on to the dolphins. Just to preface this particular discussion um, Diana and myself and another friend of ours has signed up, have signed up to go to um, a Swim with the Dolphins event in Hawaii in February. We're very excited about it. And we've already started reaching out to the dolphins and uh, I think Diana has um gotten some more clear communications with them already um yeah okay you sent a very nice informative website about which who were probably sort of like people who also work with dolphins and the 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 the, the people we're going to see you said they were kind of like trained by them or whatever right there's a little community called Dolphin dolphinville Bill in Hawaii in, near the Kona coast and a um, bunch of like 200 people live in that community and they're all dolphin people and they've all had a pretty strong commitment to dolphins and a couple of them have 
trained other people and we're going to be working with some of these people from Dolphinville. The, uh, I think it was kind of like maybe the day before you sent an email with information about Dolphinville. Yeah. Um, I can already feel, so like the dolphins, kind of like, like the chickens. The chickens are on the outskirts and there's not that many of them. Um, they're not like the pig collective or the lobster collective. Then I felt kind of like, ooh, okay, dolphins are kind of like on the outskirts. The periphery of my my seeing things in my head. So, um, and then after you, I looked at the website, right? It's like, ooh, one of them came up to me. Pretty clear and kind of close, right? So I can actually really see their head. And, um, and for some reason I knew it was like a female. And she says, welcome. We're looking forward to, you know, seeing you next year or what, something like that, right? You know? So I'm thinking, wow, this is great. She's very friendly, very friendly. And then she says, follow me. And at one point also, she's not, she starts chirping in her dolphin language, uh -huh. which I, and, and it turns out she was talking in English. Oh. So I could understand the dolphin language, right? But well, it wasn't dolphin language, it was her chirpy voice, right? Mm -hmm. and I forget what she had said. But anyway, so I'm following her through the water, right? And you know how they kind of like jump out of the water, but they're, this was like in the water, going like... <clears throat> Making like a yeah, up so and down I'm, wave. Right, so I'm following her mm -hmm. also. And then the next thing I see was kind of like... Uh, Oh yeah, and, and it, when she initially came up to me, she was there, like really close up. But then I saw two or three of them in the background. Okay, so I'm, I follow her, and then the next thing is, there's a whole bunch of them in a circle, right? And, um... Like how many? Between um, 15 and 20. Okay. And they're kind of like, somehow they know that, um, you know, we're doing a podcast and they're very excited about this, right? And they think it's kind of funny because it's a podcast <laughs> and they're laughing. Right? They, they of all creatures would understand a pun. Yeah. <laughs> a punny pun. Right. So, <laughs> and now they're laughing more now. Oh. oh, they're laughing with you. Yeah. Maybe we have to find a sound, soundtrack of laughing dolphins to add in here. <laughs> okay, and and th since then they have communicated that like they're really interested. They're wondering what we're going to be talking about because I said, well, you know, we can ask you questions. Um, and uh, I mean, obviously they can't talk directly on the podcast right no but they could talk through you or they could give you a message right okay so so they're still they're still there in a circle and they're they're waiting mm -hmm. okay so so they haven't started speaking yet no i guess they're waiting for us to ask them questions oh okay so i have a question for you dolphins um it's my understanding that you've transcended um, many different types of beings on this earth. Okay, so, this is so. referencing the fact that you have all this knowledge from many, many different types of inhabitants of this earth, and you have um, bigger brains than humans, <laughs> so much larger capacity to store all this information and to I'm assuming do things with the knowledge that you have. What are some of the more interesting bits of knowledge that you have that we humans don't have access to yet? Hmm. Okay. Um, it seems like they're saying they've got sort of communicative knowledge. 
in that they have enhanced ways of communicating I mean with each other but also with with these other I don't know what you want to call them not civilizations but entities or multi-dimensional beings or whatever that are all here um, so they can communicate with all the dimensional beings on the in this area in this in the cosmos or in the Earth's existence? Um, you mean in the Earth's past existence? No, or right. The, or the, the Earth's current situation. So, uh, more like local versus sort of like like real cosmic. Well, they don't know because. I mean, I don't think they know the extent of, of, you know, I mean, I, my vocabulary with this stuff is kind of limited, but in terms of, so like the, the great variety of multidimensional beings that are out there, there could be ones that they've never encountered and they have no knowledge of, they, they don't even know that they exist. So, but but they can communicate with um, beings that we certainly can't communicate with, or at least very few humans can. And are these multidimensional beings here on Earth with us right now that they're communicating with? Well, they're they're in the ether, you know. It's right. Like, yeah. But they they're... may not. They may not be here constantly. You know. Mm. Oh, they come and go. There may be parts of them here. Um, yeah, they may not be permanently here. They may. They travel. So. And is there a collective effort on the part of these multidimensional beings that are here now? For instance, a collective effort to raise the consciousness of humanity or to, um, you know, some lofty goal like that. Is there a collective mission between well, the dolphins and these multidimensional beings? It's been like that for a long time. Um, I mean, that, that has always been the goal since since they can remember, okay? Um, the goal was never to remain static or go backwards. The, the goal was always to ascend. Uh, um, Individually or collectively, or both? Both. I mean, if an individual does it, and if there's many individuals, then it's a collective. So the dolphins are ascending along with us. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're way ahead of us. So they're helping. In, in, a, in, a, way, in a sense, they're, they're way ahead of us. So they would be helping us to ascend. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they like to think so. They like to think that whatever they've done in the past and currently, you know, is actually helping Um helping humans, and then also helping these other multidimensional beings, you know, to, because I mean, everything's connected. They're all one big family. Are they happy with the progress that we're making on? Um, I'm not sure if that's a... Uh, I don't know if they, okay, they don't know if they see it in terms of progress or not because it's, it's like, okay, they don't even see it in terms of time. I mean, if they've been here for a long, long, long time, they don't see it as a long time because it's all connected and it's like, they have the sort of like the their global knowledge base, right? Which has all this knowledge. 
so that it's just flowing freely. Um, you see what I'm... This is... Okay. Yeah, I can this, understand. This is what they're saying, you know? So in terms of... Well, it's beha so it's, it's continuing to be an ascension type of process. They don't see us stagnating or going backwards or since they're ascend they're assisting in that they're okay with the way things are going well okay i mean they they do have to say that there's some parts that they're not quite happy with but i mean a lot of it is kind of like sometimes out of their control just basically because I mean, the one. I guess I guess this applies to everybody that they deal with, the human beings, their own, their fellow dolphins, other species of dolphins, the multi-dimensional beings. Um, I mean, they all have free will, you know. Um, so it could be an individual decides to do something and an individual turns into a collective and they decide to do something that is not quite in the direction of ascension, right? But, um, you know, that's just part of the whole thing. They don't see it as good or bad. It just is. Okay. I mean, <laughs> well, that's fine. But, but okay, they also want to say that they part of what they want to accomplish, or part of part of their purpose, is to be happy. Also, and what what does being happy mean to them? Part of it is having fun, okay? Um, so, I mean, it's like whatever, whatever they're, however they live and whatever they're trying to do, it's like that's always, it's, it's kind of like a balanced out between, they, they don't worry about stuff. Um, you'd think that perhaps they have a, you know, a, they have a right to be worried, but they don't see it that way somehow. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. And then they, they're, they're, they know what one of the intentions is, but another one of the intentions is also sort of like happiness. And um, they're, they're always balancing it out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because they are very happy. The you dolphins know? are very happy. Yeah. I mean, they're naturally happy. It's, it's very rare to find a sad dolphin. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I have a question. Um, are there any other uh, beings on this earth that have been around as long as the dolphins and with a similar purpose? Um, gosh, they said monkeys. Monkeys? Yeah. And not cats? No, they said monkeys. Interesting. Think about monkeys and how happy they usually are. Right. A very silly. But monkeys can also... I mean, monkeys encompasses a whole bunch of different kinds of... Mm -hmm. You know, it could be apes, it could be gorillas, it could be chimpanzees, it could be... Right. Right. They like monkeys for some reason. <laughs> The dolphins and the monkeys. Who'd have thought, right? Right. And, uh, you know, okay, 
how but they you... have been they've been around like the dolphins through a lot of the different civilizations the Lemurians and whatever previous civilizations or they say yes and I mean how do they know this right well if they were there they might know yeah I know but that would mean monkeys would have to be living underwater also oh I don't know was the whole earth covered with water at one point um well, no, they're not saying the not the whole earth was covered in water, but there were some civilizations that were underwater, that were living in the water. So, I don't know, it could... Hmm. They're kind of, they're kind of like saying monkeys have an increased capability of actually doing this, whatever you said it was, the bifurcation oh, of whatever. Yeah, the uh, having the um, etheric, physical, physio etheric uh, bodies where they're more um, able to change, you know, from a etheric to a physical sh being. Now, let me ask this question then because the monkeys brains are not known for being bigger than the human brains and the dolphins brains are known for being hu bigger than the human brains so if the monkey brains are smaller and they can do very sophisticated things like shape shift from etheric physiotheric to physio but they're, they're saying it doesn't require that much brain power to do that <laughs> oh, so we humans have enough brain power to do it we just don't know how they don't know. They they're so well. I mean, they're saying some some humans could do that, right? Um, uh, and I'm sure that's true. Yeah, but it's not the norm for humans, right? Very interesting piece about the monkeys. I don't know where that came from. It's like all of a sudden it's like oh. Yeah, they like monkeys. They really like monkeys. <laughs> uh, this is a silly question. Are there any place on this planet where they get to interact directly with monkeys freely? Um, gosh, they're saying yes. And where is it? It's, it's like... Madagascar? No. I, 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 I don't know if they'd actually name names that we know. Uh -huh. But it is, it is some kind of water-based place. And the monkeys are like riding on the dolphins. Oh, interesting. Now, okay, is it... Is it you, the monkeys that we're, I mean, the dolphins that we're talking to right now that do this, or do they just know of dolphins that do this? Have you been to those places yourself? We've heard about it from, from other dolphins. And we know it used to happen. <laughs> very interesting oh my gosh very uh, interesting I mean think about all the places that if something like that might have happened at one time that are probably too populated now with humans for that to happen right oh my gosh <clears throat> also you know it's like they're saying monkeys have been throwing coconuts at them oh but just for fun, right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. <laughs> I've walked through the woods and had monkeys throw mangoes at me. <laughs> I don't know what kind of, like, I think at one point previously we were talking about games or yeah. something, right? It was dolphins. Oh, well, hide and seek, right? 
Oh, yeah, dolphins like to play hide-and-seek. Right. But um, they also seem to like to interact with also various types of other creatures in, in, in the waters that they're in and then also outside of the waters. So They're very friendly. Yeah, you know? so like, like people and like sea lions... Birds. Birds. Oh. Um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, and they're saying, yes, yes, our community is very, very big. <laughs> so, okay, one question that had been bothering me was that obviously dolphins are not vegetarians. They do eat fish. Um, so, I mean, is fish the only thing you eat? No, oh, they eat other stuff too. Other sea creatures. Does it bother you that you're eating these? Um, no, because if we didn't, we'd die. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and then they say the fish, and they know that. So, it is what it is. Right. So, another question for the dolphins. With all the intelligence they have and how long they've been here, why did they choose the water as their place as mammals to live all these millennia? They're saying, good question. Good question. Sometimes we really ask that of ourselves. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, we've been here, they've been there so long. It's like... I don't know if they really think about it anymore, but if they go back in, into their collective knowledge, um, you're saying somebody, somebody decided that. Somebody being like one of the early beings that, that became the dolphins decided that. Um, they thought it would be just f fun to do <laughs> because it seemed like you know I mean if you're in the water it's kind of like effortless you could be like really really big and you could swim really fast um, as opposed to being on land where it requires more effort to actually do a, do some of the physical things dolphins can do, and I suppose they like to do those. Yeah, they are. They they're saying something about acrobatics. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know they like that, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be able to do that on land, really. Much harder. Right. Good answer. Um, so I'm I'm thinking it's like why not air? Why didn't they choose air? Well, they wouldn't be really big then. I mean, how many how many flying flying animals are there? Because I'm sure birds are not the only flying animals, right? What's the largest bird? Certainly not as big as a dolphin, right? Ostrich. No, that's they don't they don't fly. Oh, that's right. The, um, yeah. So they would seem to be concerned about so like the physical things they could be doing, and they want to find the right environment for that. And again, it's like acrobatics. They like that. So I, yeah, and they can't really change now. 
I mean, they could, but then they could and they couldn't. Okay, I have another question. I have two questions that are coming up. Um, one is, um, the dolphins ever consider leaving the earth? Um, not at this time. Um, and if you're talking about any time previously, um, they... They're saying, yeah, they have. There have been periods where some of them actually have left. So they didn't leave. I mean, they didn't all leave. Some of them did leave, but it's just like small groups. Were they more of the larger cetaceans, like whales, that left, or just? They're they're talking in terms of not whole species they're talking in terms of individual pods or something groups yeah you know <clears throat> um, yeah and why did they leave they just didn't like it here anymore now my other question is more about um, this whole theory of evolution and the idea that um, I guess it's a it's a complicated question, like a cross between evolution and reincarnation. Um, is it feasible to think that um, dolphins were, or the you know physical form of a dolphin actually originated from something as simple as an amoeba, and then evolved through the years, or did it come in? Um, differently in a different type of um, more complete physical form and my second question is about incarnation and do dolphins incarnate um, reincarnate as dolphins or do they incarnate as other things sometimes like people and animals, monkeys even, and then go back to dolphins later in an incarnation. And the reason I put these two together is I'm just wondering um, how um, evolution, our theories of evolution play into this. Like would a consciousness of a dolphin or start in an amoeba and end up in a dolphin one day? Hmm. These are pretty complicated questions. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're saying. Yeah, pretty complicated. Well, as far as they know, okay. There, okay. This runs contrary to how we think, we as humans think in terms of evolution. Um, it's... Um, they they didn't evolve from like little one celled amoebas. They came from elsewhere. They being sort of like the dolphin spirits or whoever whoever's inhabiting the dolphins now, right? It could be a whole bunch of different types of beings. Um, they they actually created the dolphin bodies for themselves. They did. So when they came here, they came here as dolphins, not as some... No, they came here as what, whatever they were, uh -huh. like, you know, pure energy. And then they decided, okay, you know, how do we want to live here? And like, this was goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, why did they choose to live in the water? Right. 
because th- they wanted cer- certain things. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, yeah, that's what they're saying. And so, well, and the, the incarn- reincarnation or incarnation part is like, there's no pure, just like humans, right? There's no pure humans. Um, there's there's different energy beings, and some of them are in, in the dolphin bodies. And um, depending on what they want, they can come back as, a, as other something else. So they could come back as a human one time and a dolphin the next. Um, yeah, except they're saying they don't know. <laughs> they don't know too many that have done that. <laughs> Would they in- reincarnate as a monkey then? <laughs> I don't know. Um, they they could, but it it could be that they have the same pro- problems as as humans do, in that they don't. They don't remember. But, okay, you'd think that if they have this global co- collective dolphin wisdom, knowledge base, right? They would be more prone, they'd be more able to remember things like that. Um, but maybe, maybe they're not quite as evolved as we, we think they are. Maybe they don't know everything, you know. Um, what I mean is, maybe they don't know everything about themselves. Maybe they're like us, they're figuring things out. Yeah, okay, I mean, they're saying, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're all figuring things out. Together. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. Together. But they're still smarter than us. Well, they, Wiser. In, they're saying in some ways they are. In some ways they're, we are wiser than them. Give an example of how we're wiser than them. Um... Hmm. This would be so like not as groups of humans, just individual humans. Um, I don't. Okay, I'm not. I'm not really getting too much. Maybe, maybe they don't, okay, so like, maybe they don't have access to, so like, global, collective human wisdom. You know, they've got their, the access to the global, collective, dolphin wisdom. And whoever they've interacted with previously. But maybe they don't know everything about us, about oh. humans. You Do know? they want to know more about us? Um, they want to know more about us to the extent that it will enable everybody to progress and ascend. I mean, they don't want to know scientific facts or, you know, how to build a rocket ship to the moon. You know, it's like, yeah. (laughs) They don't want to go someplace that doesn't have any water. Well, I mean, they could, but it wouldn't be on a rocket ship. Right. They'd get there a different way. Yeah. Like teleport or something. Right. Yeah. So they're they're finding this actually quite interesting. 
<laughs> they like they like having an interview. They they think we have. There's lots of questions, lots of interesting questions, stuff that they don't really think about all the time. You know. Do they want to pause and come back another day, or do they want to keep going? Um, I don't know. I mean, they're they're saying that they're also kind of like regular humans in that they they parts of them exist they're okay so like their physical bodies exist in the three-dimensional world and they have to do stuff to keep on living there just like, like humans do like eating and pooping and having babies and right exactly yeah so that takes up quite a lot of their time too mm -hmm. um i mean just like humans so um but it's like the fact that they have like two hemispheres of their brain yeah it doesn't doesn't make them okay it makes things easier for them in some ways safer yeah but they're saying well you know they have the same I don't know what you call it the same hurdles to go through as other beings do in terms of ascension you know I mean not every, it's not easy they're here just like everybody else is here very interesting so we shouldn't be looking at them as like some kind of like you know the holy grail that will help save us okay well that begs another question because i've read that the people that live in dolphinville which is that little community along the coast of kona have lived there like they say they keep getting older they're not really dying and they when they get sick they heal really easily the, the dolphins no the, the people. people oh the people in dolphinville and dolphinville is known for a community that feels one with the dolphins and so they feel like they're maybe tapping into a consciousness that is making them physically more healthy um you know, maybe spiritually more healthy too. It's not always clear what um, causes someone to, you know, heal faster from a sickness and and live longer. But these people claim to, you know, have a pretty strong bond with the dolphins in general and spend time swimming with them and and uh, you know, to their best abilities, communicating with them. Mm -hmm. And the result is that they're all... That's all for this episode of the 1 to 9 Podcast. Thank you for listening and please sign up for our newsletter at 1to9podcast.com.